three, two, one. Francis, welcome to the yes. podcast, brother. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for inviting me, man. Happy to be here. Francis Vinya Nueva. Nueva. Vinya Nueva. Vinya Nueva. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Vin- you pronounce it one more time. Villa Nueva. Villa Nueva. Nice. Yeah, right. that's it. Villa Nueva. So it's pronounced differently, I suppose, in, in some countries. It is of Spanish origin, but Filipinos and all that got a lot of that where we're from. So yeah, Villa Nueva. Quite a mouthful. Yeah. But you did it well. On your Instagram t- <laughs> handle, it's Francis Fella. Yeah. Like, um, is Francis a surname Fella or is it? Nah, I suppose it's just that fella over there. <laughs> 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 yeah. Had that name for a while. I don't know, maybe... 20, I don't know, Instagram, and it was before Facebook. Yeah. And one of the guys said, oh, let's make an Instagram and all that, and that fellow there, Francis Fella. The, uh, Plus, oh, my last name is very long, and yeah. it kind of sounds and starts the same. But yeah, yeah, that's that. Bro, thank you for stopping by. Mm-hmm. I, I was just saying before, I enjoy our chats so much mm-hmm. every time we hang out. And same. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to hang out some more and, um, yeah. and document it along the way. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm cool with that, man. Yeah. I always enjoy it and all that. Sometimes I extend time talking to you and all that. Yeah. We go in deep. We go rabbit holes and all that sometimes, hey? Oh, man, you... Which is very nice. <laughs> every, every time we, we rabbit hole diff- down different things, hey, I enjoy mm. chatting to you about books. We, we talk yes. about mm. um, relationships a lot and, um, yeah. and how mm. what, you know, what we're learning and, mm-hmm. and the development of ourselves helps with our relationships, sometimes with yeah. work stuff, sometimes with stuff at home. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. How, I suppose, the unifying thing of everything when, when you're sort of experiencing human life and, I don't know, the ups and downs of it and all that, somehow it, we can't avoid but take it to work, take it to our friends and all that. And if you're aware of it, it's not to compartmentalize, but sort of know when is, you know, when it's time for it to show and all that. And relationship is very cohesive in a sense. How you are to, say, home reflects what you are with your workmates and... And so on and so forth, I suppose. So yeah, it's really nice. And books are very good. It helps a lot because, as we've, we've talked about a while ago, we don't learn a lot of these things at school, at least at my school, at my time. So yeah, I yeah. didn't learn any mm. of it in my school either. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's why we dig in in books and all that, I suppose, because there's a lot of people that have experience and put it out there. And if you resonate with it, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So. What books did you like that we talked about anyway? Man, I really like the ones that um, mm. that you talk about, the Japanese philosophy ones. Ah, yeah, yeah that's like the, how, um, the courage to be disliked. The courage to be yeah, disliked. I, yeah, I, I, cannot, I cannot extend that to anyone, like anymore, you know. It's very good. It's, the title is pretty good. There are other books out there with similar yeah. materials, I suppose, but this one was viewed from a philosophy standpoint Yeah. from a, I don't know, Clinical psychology point of view as well. That's the one, yeah. That's the one, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. amazing, man. It's just a very tolerant sort of being, yeah. That's why I love it. And um, at some point when I started reading it, I was trying to sort of find a way to maybe be resistant about the truth that I found in there. Like, couldn't be true. So I was looking for it every time, like a reason like to disprove it. But so far, so good, yeah. Not that I'm trying to sort of defy it. I don't know, maybe it's in me. I'm very stubborn. Yeah. Me too, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm very stubborn. Like, yeah, so I liked a little bit of that in the sense that, you know, it gets you a slight <laughs> obsessive to sort of look for something. You it's need cool. a little bit of that, you know, yeah. a bit of a drive. Yeah. There, was, um, there was that mm. one line you shared with me. Yeah, um, what was that? And I, I've forgotten, exa- and I don't want to butcher, butcher mm. it, but it yeah, was something yeah. along the lines of everything in life is, every problem in life mm-hmm. is, oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stuff this up. Something about oh, no. how... Um, when we're faced with an obstacle or something in our life Mm -hmm. is challenging or whether it was like an argument or disagreement, it Mm -hmm. all comes back to the same thing. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Um, It comes back to the same thing, I suppose. Like it it is with the line of, um, we talked about a lot of the ego and all that stuff and how everything lines up with it, which is not really a bad thing. I believe it's just more of like awareness to it. Like, you know, your anxiety leaping out of you and all that. And it roots down to, I suppose, um, how you are to yourself and how you are to others are about the same, you know. So the kinder you are to yourself and how you know it, the more you be kinder to other people and all that. So um, uh, it roots down to truthfulness. So um, I think within this line with that book that, um, that we talked about before is, um, oh, man, what was it? 
Now I'm blank. <laughs> okay, I'm sure, I'm sure yeah, it'll yeah. come oh, to me as well. Yeah, yeah. So this is it. Very, very dangerous proclamation. This is what I'm trying to disprove, but yeah. it's in a sense like life is meaningless. Whatever meaning there is to it must be assigned by the individual. So for me, it roots down to it in a sense that it's a choice of people. Um, no matter, you know, you could be in a level where uh, other people's aren't. And when you see them learning about it and stuff like that, you just, I suppose, got to be tolerant about that, you know, that's, that's their journey, you know. You can help them, you can contribute in a sense, but let them take it, I suppose. It's an approach yeah. of very patient, slow one. So a lot of people nowadays like to rush, 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 you know, with all these formats that we have, our apps, you know, and use it in the shop and all that. Yeah. Here, you know, which is good. We have to adhere to that. And I'm very bad with time. I'm surprised yeah. I was here a few minutes early. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have anyone can testify to that. Like, I show up early and I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> is this the world going to end? But in a sense, we got to commit to it and all that. But there are a few things that I suppose that we can take a bit slow, like, you know, patient things with, with ourselves and all that. Things that require whatever time it needs and all that, you know, um, introspecting traumas and all that. So there happens to be a lot of that recently for me. So, you know, just sort of introspecting, not just traumas, but everything, you know, looking back in life and having a look at, at everything that has happened quite clearly without the whole, I am great, you know, you, what okay. you can still, you know what I mean? Just yeah. the realistic way of it. So it's okay. It's okay to be crap sometimes. It is okay you know? to be crap <laughs> so, sometimes, yeah. bro. It's just yeah. a perspective, yeah. I've also mm. been doing m mm -hmm. much the same thing. I think with the uh, gyms being shut down with lockdown and yeah. stuff, it's, it freed up a lot of my time for reflection and, and mm -hmm. uh, I guess thinking about my journey and thinking about what I could yeah. improve on and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I enjoy those chats and those thoughts. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I get blown away and... I get home and, of course, I talk to my wife a lot. And I don't know what I... Sometimes I, I feel like uh, I have to keep it within me. Uh, she can't get it, our conversations, all that. But I just get stunned because that's you, right? Um, and there's quite a few people as well that come in that are just equally as pleasant and all that. Some not so pleasant as well, okay. but in the end, you know, <laughs> yeah. in the end, it's just the human experience. Thank, They're in that thank, stage. Thank you for putting me in the pleasant Oh, no, you are. Amazing. I mean, the fact that we enjoy yeah. conversation, I don't yeah. think you'll invite me here if I um, <laughs> don't have that. No, bro. If I, <laughs> if I headed your chat, be like, yo. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, I, and I go home and I'm like, wow, that was a load of, um, sometimes it can feel like an emotional dump. Okay. But then I thought, ah, we're just dumping on each other. <laughs> yeah. We go in a coffee shop and all that why is it not the way I want it kind of thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so in the end, um, just to process it and not to sort of like, you know, give it, you know, out of that energy something negative is just quite a challenge sometimes. So I sometimes wonder when I'm tired and all that. And one of the guys that recently started um, in the shop would always say like, I don't know why I'm tired. Hey, I wake up and I'm really tired. So I'm like, I don't know, man. Some, sometimes you feel like someone beat him up in his sleep and all that. Okay. Yeah. But maybe that's it. When we process things and all that, um, it takes a lot of strength and all that. So I suppose when you, when you face things that normally you don't face and you put aside, it becomes a little bit more of a tiring task because you seem to accumulate it. So it's good to sort of live, I suppose, let go life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think how we live our days, mm. day to day and sometimes week to week, can mm -hmm. in in I've certainly experimented with myself. Mm -hmm. It can mess up my battery levels, or it can be recharging. So yeah, it, yeah so some days true. yeah some days if I'm not careful, mm. I'll zap my energy stores too much, and then I'll feel it the next day. But other days, if ah, I'm if I'm monitoring true. and controlling how much energy I'm allowing myself to expand on that different things, yeah. Um, partly mm. after I I read a book by um I think the guy's name is Mark. Mark Man Manson, yeah. yeah, yeah. The subtle art of not giving a fuck, yeah. of like expanding energy on things that really yes. we don't need to expand energy on. Yeah, and that that one helped mm. me a lot. I was like, Man, That's why true. Do, why do I give a damn about that? Or why am I yeah, even thinking yeah. about that right now? Yeah. I can see how. Yeah, yeah, I can see how at the end of the day that could contribute to me having less energy. To, for things that I enjoy. Yeah, like, that's true. Like training or family time or hanging out yeah, with Yeah, what matters to you in yeah. a sense, you know what I mean? So we can make choices about that. The making choices part, I suppose, is that where it needs practice. Yeah. And the choices, I believe, is, excuse me, where um, argument, I suppose, lies. So um, to decide what is good or what is bad, you know, for you or for someone else sort of thing.
Yep. And that's where you can, I suppose, expand things, what is. So, yeah, the, the whole sourcing of energy is quite, quite fascinating. Cool, when you wake up with X amount of energy, where yeah. you put it defines the quality of your day-to-day, -day, I suppose, like yeah. you say. So it's a nice thought to sort of be aware of that. I love the whole thought about you know, choice and all that because it means that you can make a choice, sort of a series of choices to get yourself out of, say, trouble or what you think you are, story of you can never work out, you can never do this, you can never do that. If it lies within a choice, it's a matter of just making one every day. And I like that sort of, um, that whole process of it in a sense that, uh, I don't really like that process of it. Sometimes it's very hard, but I like the whole tool of a process in a yeah. sense that it's a series of choice. So when people say, I can never be as good as I think I can be, um, but when you series, uh, show up every day, I suppose, make a series of choices, and you get to that point, and I love the choice thing, yeah, it's good. The choice yeah. thing is cool, man. I think it it's is, quite it? empowering. Yeah. And in my industry, I see it a lot of um, yeah. just negative chat about oneself of, uh, yeah. oh, I can't do this, I can't burn fat. No, I can never, no, I've tried, yeah. I've tried losing weight before, um, I couldn't do uh, it, da da da, true, true. da da So just like this negative loop they're convinced, of, yeah, they're convinced. I, whatever I do, I can't, I can't get mm. to the gym. I experience low motivation. No, my motivation's so low, I can't, uh, can't move. And then um, through choice selection, yes, yes. In my industry, it's more through values. If values. if I value health and fitness, and I know uh, that I need to exercise to to manage my health and fitness, yeah, yeah. then I will prioritize. That's true. Yeah. Because that's what you think is good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, I value it so hard. So mm. even though I've, I'm tired, or even though I've had a lot on mm. at work, or a lot of, say, family troubles, mm. or work troubles, or I might be in pain, yeah, yeah. or busy looking after the kids, mm. or whatever it is, I'm still going to make sure that in my week, I have enough exercise because that's I true. value how that will help this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a good thing and all that, to sort of really a lot of time for it. Yeah. Because in the end, that's that's what matters to you and all that. And to be honest, a little bit of um, a little bit of exercise, isn't it, is helpful. Yeah. Anything, anything that you do for it is good. So minimum or I suppose a lot would be great in a sense, yeah. but something at least, right? But we make excuses sometimes and I often fall for it. Yeah. Yeah, we quite often. <laughs> we, we all make excuses, man. But yeah, at the end of the yeah. day, I like how you're saying it is a choice. It it's is a our choice. choice to make that excuse. I love that you said okay. it's empowering. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that is empowering to know that I can do this. You yeah. Know? If, yeah. If our mm. choice is to skip out on walking the dog, I know both you and I, I forget your dog's name. Someone, uh, Jiro. Jiro, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, if we don't walk Jiro and Shady, yeah. then that's our choice. If That's, the dog yeah, has cardiovascular mm. disease and ends yes. up with dog diabetes and yeah. fat problems, then That's true. It's, it was our choice to neglect yeah, the, to the neglect puppy and, and not yeah. walk him. And really? Can't open the door, right, these yeah. guys? Yeah, <laughs> so well, they'll like, get out and to walk, walk about and all that. Yeah. Yeah. But I love it, man. In that light as well, it gives me, the, I suppose, the best feelings in the morning. I start my day right and I just get up there and walk and all that to make that commitment. And it's good for me anyway. Yeah. But our dogs and all that show the most... I suppose, obvious signs when it, when it comes to these things, you know. They don't negotiate with these stuff. And I think we talked about this in a way that as humans with our powerful brains and all that stuff, and we can, we can think, we get to, we know how to rationalize. Our intent sometimes can be so warped up that we kind of say, negotiate. If I eat this piece of cake and all that, maybe tomorrow I can exercise a bit more, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and our dogs are supposed to fall for that. And then when we look after them, we look after them in this sort of nice, good diet that is good for them and all that. Yeah. And we turn around and give these things to ourselves and all that. Like, Hard, man, with sugar, man. right? Hard. Yeah, like, so... Nope, can't give my dog that. It's a very good example, I suppose. You can grow. learn, bro. Yeah, yeah. we can learn because um, we adhere to them, but they can't... Let's say they can rationalize, but they have no choice because we play lord over them, <laughs> you yeah. know? That's why we try to be kind because... Um, the best thing, I suppose, that many things I've learned with my dog or being around with any dog, and maybe dogs can, dog people can relate to this in a sense, or people of dogs, that um, just the culture presence, man. The guy's just there and just shows you the example of like how they are just are. You know what I mean? Yeah. You give them money, it won't mean anything. Because for them, what resembles is just love, food, and all that. And it's yeah. there. So. We could root down our sort of basic things about it, and everything they would do would be like a bonus or a choice. You know? Yeah. Few things they can have a choice about, like to not have food. Yeah. You gotta have food. 
you know, gotta have shelter, right? So everything else is almost like, you know, if you make a choice to adhere to this, to culture, to society and all that. And that, the hence being the choice being empowering, you know? But it requires a lot of resolve and that's where I suppose all this character building kind of happens when bad things happen or I say I would, I would think of bad as unfortunate or doesn't favor me in a sense. Um, we can learn a lot of, from that and that's where the whole um, process kind of goes, the transition phase. That's where a lot of resistance and, you know, baff, uh, battling your thoughts and all that before you decide to open your gym. So yeah. that's a lot of learning, condensed and all that. And when you open a gym, it's almost like you've thought so much that, you know, you just got to see things, how it plays out and doing these things is, yeah. is amazing. But it must have like, you know, condensed before it happened, right? So the learning is there, you know? So it inspires me, I suppose, to go through harder times because yeah. that's where the learning is, you know? Dude, that that speaks, to, it speaks with me hard as well. Good, the, man, the, yeah. The hard times mm. and the, the challenges that we face day mm -hmm. to day, that's where we draw the lessons and... And um, I, yeah. yeah, I I love Japanese analogy, and that's like where the katana gets, the samurai yeah. sword gets created. Is that is true? If um, if we just lived mm. happily ever after for like ever since we were kids, and like experienced yeah. no challenge, no adversity, it's no true. no difficulty mm. in life, then it's true. I when everything seems to be sort of black and white and all that, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we learn in the, in the end and all that. So. Um, Oh, there's this, I forgot this book that we encountered um, a while ago, but it, it, it just sort of mentioned in, in that book in a sense that how um, at the first decades of your life, you, you kind of remember a lot of it. It seemed like those times were so lengthy in a sense. But because that time, I suppose, when you're a child and, and all that, you tend to perceive things for what they are because you don't have been a preconceptions and of, of many things. So um, when we become adults or we think that we've made a sense of things, um, we kind of like go autopilot with it and just do whatever everyone is doing and all that until we get a certain point that maybe we relearn again, like, whoa, um, it's not what I thought it was. So you start seeing things again as like a child. And at some point, you just couldn't give a damn about anything. Like, I'm be whatever I can be, you know, as long as I'm kind to everyone who I think is kind. And that's it. It's important to have, a, I suppose, a moral compass. And when it comes to choices and, um, and morality, I suppose, in a sense that it's good to know, um, to go to the nth degree of what you know, like for what you yourself um, know what is good and you do the otherwise, then in your own self, you kind of would have failed yourself in that way of doing yeah. something good. And I like that basis of individuality in a sense, just because what, what best you know you do to that. And whatever you do from uh, against the good things of, of what you know is good is going against, you know, you're failing in a sense. So it roots down to, I suppose, an individual decision making that never mind what I, I think is right or wrong, what you think is right or wrong, and did you do the wrong bit? In that sense, you've kind of like, uh, not really fail. Failing is just, I suppose, it's like an nth degree, but at that point, you could have tried better mm. to to go to what you know is good and do that, yeah. So I love that whole thing. And it, that's that's heavy on one's mm -hmm. soul and one's conscious to, mm -hmm. to think, oh man, actually I did do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I think that when we're in that moment, we have to live with that and we have to yeah. go to bed knowing maybe I yeah. could have done better or maybe I could have done more for the, to help that person or make a better decision. Yeah, well, the good thing is you're not done till you're dead, you know. That's true. You wake up the next day, you can do better. True, That's right. the good thing about the learnings, I suppose. So you try and try every day. Yeah. Um, and to, again, the power of choice. It's, you try, yeah. Mm. It's fascinating when we're, mm. when we're little, when we're young, yeah. nothing is molded. So everything, like you say, everything seems like yes, a lifetime yeah. mm. and where's, well, yeah, we're not really clued into yeah. like the adulthood problems or yeah, the adulthood yeah. decision making yeah. of Which, culture and influence in society. Mm -hmm. So when you go for that, I suppose like, it's like you explore life with a childlike wonder, you know? Yeah. And now I'm trying to rediscover it again and all that. So, I don't know, man. Maybe it's like a midlife crisis, you know? I, <laughs> I'm I don't to that know, point. bro. I think... I think <laughs> Probably not a crisis, but <laughs> I think about like, whoa, what is this torrent of information now, you know? Because yeah. I've seen it for how it kind of like was shown to me. Okay. And now I'm finally trying to see it for what it is, you know? Um, I'm trying to separate what I feel about it. Now, of course, I, I don't ignore what I feel about it, but I'm seeing it as more of like a separate thing from what is. So... Because 
what I feel about it is subject to, I suppose, my becoming until now, you know? So I don't always sort of rest that as an absolute. I will not tell you that this is so right. I would think like, oh, you think it's right? I don't see it, you know, the same way. And I would ask you, um, and if I don't, that, it means I need sleep or food or coffee. You know what I mean? Like, like the most of the world yeah. and all that, we need a little bit of um, a kickstart. So, but yeah, it's good to just sort of like um, really explore it yeah, and be in the moment about it. And then again, that's, that's the transition, you know, that's when you learn, when you've done something, what you think is wrong and all that, and you live the next day and you do it again. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. Showing up to your life every day. Yeah, showing cool. up to your life every day. Yeah, yeah, that's Just it. Waking up, whatever it is, man. You know, whatever, whatever you think it is. You know, that's like because sometimes it could be you could see it as bad, but that would be someone's dream. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. But perspective and on it. Yeah, yeah the perspective on it. That you know, you probably dreamed it when you were like you know younger. So why aren't you happy now that you're here? You know, and if you're not, um, you do something about it. And if you can't do anything about it, why worry as well? Yeah. You can't do anything about it. So that's that. But worries are natural. And I think it's only bad when it stops you from doing what you want to do. Yeah. Okay. That's like too much worrying. About yeah, yeah. Worrying. When it stops Crippling you from... Worrying. Yeah. Your fear is all right. It's, it's relevant. You feel what you feel. But when you want to do something and that stops you, I think that's when it starts affecting you in a sense. So do it anyway. Yeah. Do it fear fearfully. Yeah. <laughs> Be bold about your fear. I yeah. That's I've that. never thought of it that way. Like the mm. worry and fear is good unless it stops us yeah, from yeah. doing what we want to do. Yeah, because I suppose if it naturally comes in, like say, there's no joy in grief. There's no joy in death, you know, especially with your loved ones and all that. It's part of the process, though. You accept it. You know, what you feel about it is what you feel about it. Um, but you let it be. It's part of the process. You go through it. So in that way... Um, yeah, you don't stop yourself. You show up to your life, you do it, and do it every day and all that. It's not necessarily a joyous sort of like moment, mm. but it's something that is part of this life that you have to go through and, um, and deal with. You know, like and it, the good thing about many things like sorrow, like happiness, they end, man. Everything ends. So that's an inspiration. I suppose it's just a matter of showing it up, you know? Like yeah. either, um, I used to think back then, I'd drink a lot of alcohol, right? Um, I could never have any alcohol left in my home. Either that bottle was gone or me. <laughs> you okay. know what I mean? So I see some adversity, adversities now in my life and in, in people that I love um, in their lives as well. Either this um, um, unfortunate thing will end or me, you know? So you're not done to your dad, you know? Show up to it anyway. Maybe who just outlasts who, you know what I mean? So that's, I suppose that's just that. It's yeah. either that's going to end or me. And yeah, it's that's not going to be me, yeah. so it's going to be the... Yeah, the whole thing the about that, thing. not the alcohol now, I want to clear that up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but just things in life that you want to tackle, okay. you know? Either cool, this is going to end or me, you know? You show up to it until yeah. who's the last man standing in a sense, you know what I mean? Or wound, yeah. Whoever is standing afterwards. Bro, that's a badass mindset. Yeah, that's true, though. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever yeah. you're tackling, man. I don't know. Dishes. <laughs> no. Goals in life and all that. Yeah. True, true. Dishes. I've been tackling yeah. dishes a lot lately. I've, I've, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the first time mm. I'm cleaning up my nutrition at the moment. So I'm, ah. my coach and I are working on a completely different way of eating for me. All so, right. Yeah, where mm. I'm having a bit more carbohydrate and I'm mindfully consuming a bit more calories. Because for, oh. for a long time, I, was, I, don't, I don't think I was having enough calories. And I had a mm. high protein intake, high good fat intake, but not as much carbohydrate. Um, oh, okay. It, it worked for me and I, I was mm -hmm. happy with that. But now we're just exploring different ways of, oh. um, of eating. Don't always often hear that and all that. People going on and exploring carbohydrates and, and calories and yeah. all that. Most but, people avoid Every, yeah, like avoid yeah. carbs or carbs are bad yeah, or this yeah. is bad or that is bad. Yeah, mm. um, I love experimenting with shit generally with, with yeah, my health yeah. and my fitness. Mm. I love um, trying different different things. Yeah, you I, always seem to do and all that. Yeah, yeah I, I guess well, be curious about how you do these things. I'm honest, super yeah. curious, man. Like I've done, yeah. like you, when vegan was super popular, I've like mm -hmm. experimented with, okay, I'll do a month yeah, of vegan yeah. or like when fasting first became mm. popular, experimenting with that. Or mm. um, I've even tried like carnivore for a month. Uh, or like yeah, different. I remember these things and all that. Yeah. We always have conversations. Of every yeah. time you come to the shop, I cut your hair. And, you know, you always just say, say these things and all that. So, yeah, yeah. I have remembered that. Yeah. yeah. At Crazy. the moment, I'm learning a little bit about like preparing mm -hmm. food and cooking. And I've got a long way to go. I'm just at the beginning. But ah. it means that I've got dishes everywhere, man. And my girlfriend's always like, 
yeah. hey, uh, I'm going to need your help with uh, cleaning up the kitchen. And uh, like the yeah. old me would be like, mm-hmm. oh, man, like that's an extra chore. But, um, true, but now yeah. I'm like, okay, let me tackle these damn dishes. Yeah. Let me try and like do I this. I think we get screwed in well. by time and we think we don't have enough time for it and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you give yourself, like, say, an hour to do a dishes, it'll be plenty and all that. But it's part of it, isn't thanks, it? Like, you know, thanks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. I just need to give it an hour. No, I'm cheering you on for this dishes, bro. <laughs> you can yeah. do it, bro. Show up to those dishes. <laughs> but, like, I suppose the, the, the whole character that you have with, with that and how you tackle something simple would reflect on bigger things as well anyway, you bro, know? Bro, big time. Yeah, that's yeah. a practice of, like, from small and big and all that. Similar attitude, you yeah. know? So it, I, I it, sorry to cut you off. I love how like the things at home and random things like that, mm. or like something as simple as making a commitment to walk the dog, yeah, that, like yeah. transfers into other ways of. I think of, yeah, yeah. I just um, I think it just starts there. No, like you know, um, when you go for these, we tend to compartmentalize, man. Like yeah. we're very we're creatures of habit, and if we have say pigeonholed something, it's easy to perceive it next time. You don't have yeah. to think about it when it arises. You just kind of go through it and all that. So we tend to deem what is important and what isn't and all that in, in many, many ways. Like what's big or, you know, it has to be big when we do something. Yeah. But I think uh, like big things are comprised with small parts, isn't it? So how you do your every day is just a character build up and all that. Yeah, It's true. Yeah. You, know, you know, a really fun thing mm-hmm. I heard um, or I don't know where I got it from, but the, a, a little test is yeah. um, do you... Say you're grocery shopping and you've yeah. finished, and you've come to the car park. You've yeah. taken the shopping cart yeah. to your car. You've unpacked your gro- you've put your groceries in the boot. Yeah. Do you take the trolley back to the trolley bay, or mm. do you just leave it in like the spot next to your car? I don't know. There was a choice. I'll just leave it there. It's just as long as it's out of the way when I'm reversing. You leave it there. No, ah! no. <laughs> no. My wife talked to me about this a while ago. Really? And all that. Yeah, she-, she did. Um, some sort of test. Um, yeah. Like a test of honesty, like say when no one's watching you. Do and all you that. take the trolley back? Yeah. Yeah, when that's no it, watching. man. I gotta say, there had been times in my life that I haven't and all that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, and I look back at those days and I'm proud of where I am now. Because <laughs> well, I only do it less. And <laughs> I put it back. Yeah. Um, I do understand that um, it reflects your character. You are what you are when yeah. no one's looking at you. You know what right? I mean? It's the weirdest thing to think about, you know, when no one's looking at you, how you are, but. Yeah. That's, I suppose, how truthful we are and all that. Yeah. Which, in that line of thought, man, it shows our priority sometimes. It does. Other people, yeah. how they perceive us. Yeah. So really, if, if, you're, if no one's looking at you, are you really going to do it? And that's a test of character. Yeah. But now that we're having conversation and if anyone hears this and all that, and when they do, they're like, I'm going to put it back because someone out there might be judging and it's still taking people into mind. Yeah. It's not even like, it's almost like when it's automatic, like breathing. You're just going to take it over there and all that. Yeah. But yeah, nowadays I do. After me and my wife talked about it, so I won't say that I'm altruistic about it. It's because of my wife. <laughs> I'm like, I do it now because I think... The, is, uh, what's, what's <laughs> is going on? No. Yeah. But the way I think about it, it's just, it's just good. It's helpful as well. To a point nowadays, I would even look at it because you know how they have like big and small ones, right? Yeah. So I'm like... S- sort it out. Yeah, do I try? You know, I'm not staying there sorting everyone's out <laughs> someone's job. Um, so I just put it in wherever I think is already lined yeah. up. To a point of that, you know, but yeah. that's the extent of it. I'm not going to sit there and ponder everything and all that. I've got to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, so, what, yeah. what I like about it is the mm. discipline of, um, and it appeals to me more because yeah. I enjoy learning about human mindset with training and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like the discipline of, I've had a big day. I'm rushing to get home. I've got other commitments. Uh, I see what you like, mean. Like, will I, will I put it back over there so that it's, like, safely mm-hmm. out of the way and no one – it won't exactly. roll into someone else's car? That's true, yeah. Or will I let my other stuff that I have on that day, like, overrule the discipline of, like, me putting it back? Because I'm in a yeah, rush. I'm stressed. True. I'm tired. It's 9 o'clock and I've got to get home and have that's dinner true. and all that stuff. doesn't even take that much, doesn't it? No, it's like – like, like, yeah. One minute at the end. Yeah, the, I know. The, the end the That's day. why, like, I'm, I'm baffled sometimes with all these mindless things that we do, you yeah. know? Like, and, man, before I know it, it leaps at me. Maybe tomorrow and all that, I might even try to leave it. I'm like, you know what? I it's, talk to us better with this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you put it back. Yeah. But in the end, it doesn't take that much. So most of the time, we're just so impatient about our story and trying to sort of forward it in a sense you know yeah. what i mean our story of our day how I planned it and all that yeah. not minding the, the little things so just put it back there it takes I, one minute I, yeah. I love those i love those little moments of like am 
my God. No, I'm going to put the damn thing yeah, back. Man. I don't care. Those are reality um, checks if one, you think about it. One you know? that, one that um, I've also been analyzing lately is um, mm. when Shady takes a poo on, like, if we're going for a walk yeah. and he's done a poo, yeah. whether I'll pick it up in a bag or whether I won't. Mm. Do you True. always pick up your dog's poo? Yes, I do. Um, there are times when it's so deep in the forest and all that. <laughs> That I still pick it up most times. Okay. There are times that I don't. Yeah. <laughs> but what I do is, this is how I'm, um, the extent of my mindfulness about it. I suppose this would be a confession. Yeah. I'll just look at some grass or whatever is lying around there, just put it over there. Okay. You know, but I pick it up. Yeah. Nowadays I pick it up. I have stepped on so many dog, dog poop and all that, man. I felt like, I can't help but like, this might be karma, but I choose not to look into that direction that no one is punishing me out there. Because I feel like sometimes, you know, that someone is punishing us and all that. I, I don't like that thought too. Yeah. Even if no one's punishing me, I should do the right thing and pick it up. Yeah. But I have stepped in so many poop. Me too, bro. Especially yeah, as a kid, I used to step in dog poop all the oh, time. Oh, man. Walking you know where I'm school. from. In the Philippines, there's a lot of um, stray dogs there, man. Yeah. So it's quite a thing. So I thought when, you, when I came here, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make it like how back home is. Just everywhere just let, this is let, nature let my dog <laughs> bro I'm, i must admit i'm mm. not the i don't always pick it up man I always, yeah yeah sometimes shady poops and then we um we do a hit and run i'm like well bro. it's good and i'll look fast. at the bag i'll be like nah shady let's go really but, yeah but <laughs> i i reason it with my i'm like man it's out of the way it's natural he's taken it, it'll probably help with the growth of the plants. Pavement, yeah. Or, cause, not yeah. the pavement. Because <laughs> <Yeah, right, yeah. laughs> things that must might grow there, you know, yeah, they the, might need some poop there, you know. <laughs> Look, All the reasons in the world. Eh? Right, if it's on the pavement, <laughs> most of the time I'll pick it up. But yeah. if it's like borderline on the grass or like close to some it's little... It's thing, like, yeah. little, I'm like, man, shady, hit and run, bro. Let's go. Yeah, and I feel weird, man. I'm feeling guilty about it. Like, my girlfriend, yeah. my girlfriend always... Yeah, I'm like, my, my girlfriend grills yeah. me, but I don't feel that guilty. I think of all those times, I'm like... Remember those times when I was mm. walking home from school and I well, stepped in dog poop? We can look at it this way as well, that we're not, we've stepped in dog poop. Maybe some people's turn to, to do so, you know. Step on dog poop and all that. Maybe I'll get them some like divine sort of like intervention. I'm like, you know what? This is a sign. <laughs> you know, I stopped picking the poop now. But no one does, you know. Didn't stop me. Didn't stop you. Sometimes if it's but, on yeah. the pavement and I'm out of bags, I'll have to like wait for someone else to come. I'll be like, yo, can I borrow a bag? My like, uh, like really? 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to uh, 30 justify minutes, this sitting there just 30 minutes well I'm that. like 30 minutes away from home if oh, I go I walk say, home yeah. pick up the bag come back bro that's, uh, that's I thought that's you wait 30 happen. minutes there if people were like with bags and oh no nah. yeah yeah. Like, wait, no, no way I'm waiting for 30 minutes. Like, that would yeah. be a hit and run for sure. Yeah, that <laughs> be a hit and run for sure, yeah. Shady and sweat, yeah. <laughs> there they are, yeah. SS. <laughs> My neighbor's looking at me, damn, that's that guy that yeah. doesn't always pick up the dog poop. Man, that's something I thought of in all that one time, hey? The, the first few months, I got him last year. And I was walking around the back of, um, you know, the streets in this creek where we live. And I was about to, like, do I pick this up? And I was like, there are houses there. I don't know who's looking. Do I just... No, I just picked it up. Yeah, because every now and then I feel, feel it like someone might be watching and all that, and I could be that guy. Yeah. I had that imagination. Uh, I've seen some movies, maybe. Nasty Francis guy. Walking, yeah, there it is. Walking with his cute cab caboodle. caboodle. Yeah, again. exactly, and all that. Yeah, unsuspecting. It's a toy, yo. It's not real. <laughs> but in the end, you just pick it up, man. But yeah, nowadays, um, that's another thing as well, because I tried to reason out with plastic, you know. Too much okay. plastic in the world. Ah, bro, we're saving the environment. By Rolling it, man. It just roll it out in the soil, man. It will just fertilize there. Let the mycelium <laughs> work their way. Some mushrooms grow. We're all happy. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, I figured out. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. Bro, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. you go. I was just saying enough talk about poop. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <bro>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be into other poops and all that, that's, you know. That's the levels right. of poop. Yeah. <laughs> um, for our community listening, Francis, yes. we've mm. talked about the shop and, uh, yes, and different things. We should mention that Francis is a barber. Yes, I do. He's, I do work as a, a barber. Yeah. Mm. And you're, you've been my barber for a very long time. I haven't had a proper haircut in a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just but, because we're intending to, to grow it and all that, just right? forever, yeah. bro. Yeah. I don't know. I There's don't, no finish line in sight. When, when are we going to stop? Hey, I love working like this. So <laughs> me being a barber, it's been 12 and a half years now, man. Time passes and all that before you know and it. Twelve and a half, mate. Yeah, yeah man, yeah. It's been 2009, yeah, in January and all that. So, yeah, I love, I love working as a barber in the sense that, like, like our work in a sense, um, I, never, I never looked at it as just 
I suppose my work, um, I mainly see myself as ex exec executing all these sort of work. Um, relatability or non-relatability, I just talk to the person, I suppose, with yours. I love what's going on with a lot of my clients right now. We have, like, say, what I would call projects in a sense, you know? Like, so you put people, um, I know, in your line of work, there's certain things that you have a goal and you have a step-by-step -step thing and all that. So in hair, there's not a lot of that. Um, the whole good thing about hair is the freedom of expression, I believe, really. Um, mainly, you, hair, you get a haircut for, I would say, a practical reason would be sanitary, upkeep. It's as good as self-care for me, you know? And the rest is pretty much a choice, you know? Like, um, whatever you want, you know? As long as it be within the bounds of reason, I suppose, within the bounds of my skill and, and imagination, and we'll try to have a go and all that. What we think about and what we feel about is separate. So we have, I have projects, I suppose, with my customers and all that, that if you want to say, do your haircut in a certain way, I would tell them like, for what reason, man? Like, why do you want to aim for that if I, I can't understand what they're trying to do or trying to explain to me? So we talk it out, we talk it out and say, all right, let's give it a go. Um, maybe next time it, it will be better. So I would always tell them what I'm doing. Um, transparency is, I suppose, the key to it. So tell them what I'm doing and all that, and we can work onto, onto something and all that. So we have a lot of projects and you come back and then how did it go last time? Did it work? And just a bit of a laugh, you know? We have fun at work. and. I love being a barber because um, as much as not high earning, really, not one of those jobs, but it's a beautiful thing to be, um, be yourself, so easy. And you work with a lot of people as well that are, you know, so inconsistently consistent, uh, so consistently inconsistent in the sense yeah. that it's so nice to sort of see and, and feel this human life in that experience of cool, having a talk with people, having some banters and... With barbering, we try, nowadays at least in the shop where I work in Peaky Barbers, um, we try not to um, confine it into how we previously operate, like us as barbers in general, where we're from and all that, and the shops that we've worked. We try to make it as, um, in the words of my um, business partners and all that, organic in a sense, so natural. So let's have the structure and when we move into a next phase, if there is a next phase, then we start talking about that as well, knowing that we expect that, but when it comes, we're gonna look at it for what it is and decide from there. Nice. So I've always worked that way, and, um, and I'm glad that I've found people as well, we've found each other that we can work like that, and working for just the work itself, you know? Um, showing up every day to it. I love it, yeah. I love the whole, 12 and a half years of it now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been it's very a, good. It's a really cool experience, man. I think I've mm. been there at Peaky Barbers since inception, or since you have, day dot. my friend. Yeah, yeah you have, And I, yeah. Um, I, I mm. enjoy it, man. Every time I yeah. come, it's good vibes. Yeah, yeah. Really good environment. Everyone seems to get mm. along really well. It's very good, yeah. Mad chats, good mm. banter, good, yeah. good haircuts. Good customers, man. Yeah. It's a very you, good, good demographic yeah. there as well, yeah. I think, um, I think you guys are killing it. In, in terms Thanks, of like, yeah, yeah. It, how yeah. you guys look after your community and what you do for, yeah, yeah what you what we, you we guys try do to, you know, um, yeah. and the boys are pretty good, you know, like the owners and and my coworkers in general, we're all just running with the same thought, understanding each other, and everyone's just got, I suppose, we've fallen into the roles that we've fallen into now naturally, you know, there was no you this, you do that, yeah. you do that, you know, whoever's capable, it's more of like a task oriented shop, you know, like. For example, um, I'm seeing there's a manager in a sense, and although I am, um, most of the time, like, we run with the same thought, so our apprentice, like, um, can run the shop as how I would run it, because he knows how we run it. The, ha the main difference, I suppose, is our experience and in that level, but which I am not really, um, I have no reservations in, in sharing that um, with, with anyone, including customers. I feel like it's just, if we're vocal about it, we have this pool of knowledge that we all can t tap into and work from and community-based kind of stuff, you know? So the shop in general is run um, from that thought of having, you know, this is how we run it, you know the reason, and the guys would say, I don't understand it. And we get to a point of talking about it and coming up with something, you know, a bit more that is good for everyone. Um, so, yeah, we try to sort of be fair about it. Um, we're keeping our customers in mind, of course, mainly. And along with that, we're not sacrifi um, sacrificing well-being. So we try to get the boys to work hard, but look after yourself as well, you know? So just that, yeah. 
Um, good work environment, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, very good. You boys, are, I think you yeah. boys are, yeah, doing something special, man. Thanks, dude. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I um, I admire how passionate you are about what what you do. Last time I had a haircut, yeah. a couple of weeks back, yeah. you were telling me about the lines and how, like when yeah, you, guys when you that see I hair, look at. yeah, yeah, like when you see hair, mm. you see. I've, yes, I forgot, yes. I forget who invented the boxes. Ah, but yeah. The, the, oh, the, um, that's the um, the rule of thirds, the golden mm. ratio. Yeah. You know, say Da Vinci and you know olden times, man. They used to paint and they go run with that sort of numbers and the ratio. And I suppose um, camera guys could, I suppose, you know, explain that better than me and many people. But it's just um, a perception of the eye and you know where it looks at and. You know, there are sort of certain grids even in your phone that you could point the direction where lines could be met. And that applies as well when we're doing your hair and all that, that when you look at, you know, the beard, for example, um, it would change so much if it's squarish and how it's perceived, of course. Nothing would change. You live. You, know? <laughs> you won't die from it. But then you have a curve and you have a, a square line and all that. And how it can be seen would be very, very different. And for me, it's merely an observation, not an execution that how funny that people see it differently, you know? Like, can't relate to it, got no facial hair, but just based on observation, you got you know? a sick mustache, bro. Ah, uh, yeah, only hair can go, hey, and maybe somewhere around here. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's just, um, it's fascinating. Like, you know, this is the whole thing, even if you can't, if it's not your course, you know? You can empathize with people being into something, you know? You're into something, yeah. however different that is for people, but the process of being into something and putting time and effort to it and all that is something that you can relate in commonality. So when I see um, haircut and lines and all that, and there's so many good barbers out there, man, and how they do things, and they do things unawarely, but imagine if they're aware of what they're doing. It blows my mind, you know what I mean? How they can forward everything, so how much, I'm all for you, it. Do you mean like how much better they could be if yeah, they were yeah. aware of like... If the, they're more sort of observant thing. about what they're doing, because there's a lot of people that are naturally talented, man, who just wake up to it in a sense. Wow. But imagine if they're, you know, a bit more discerning about their skills, their natural talent, they can forward that. And a lot of people could share that sort of pool of knowledge that they would discover, so I'm all for that. You know, like, beat me or someone else, you know? Someone forward something, please. I'm all for it. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Sick. So, yeah, just I suppose that's that. Yeah. What, what else are you into at the moment? Well, I'm just thinking because there's not a lot. Right now, I suppose, um, in the past few years as well, when me and my wife looked into, or when she discovered sort of minimalism, and she was very, I suppose, quite forward about these things, I have um, been a journey with that thought, sort of thought process and all that. So the past few years have been sort of simplifying our life and all that, and trying to see really things for what they are, and it requires a lot of, like, pulling the weeds out, man. So. Okay looking at information for what it is. So as for now, I'm stepping back in, I would say, a lot of busy, sort of every kind of life that everyone is trying to sort of, sorry, go for and the whole template that we go and check. So I step back a little bit, I suppose, to just try and have a look at the things that we're into doing. And, and I suppose I've been in that stage for a while now, introspecting and looking at oh, the things that we're doing really that what's the relevance of it, and not more the relevance, but more of just looking for, you know, for what it really is. Because I've realized that um, I've seen things in a riddle um, full of trauma and issue point of view of things, or just looking at it because the world sees it this way. So I'm stepping back and just having a look at everything in life and what's going on in my life, of course, because I can't really observe anyone's but mine mainly. So it's more of like, Stepping back and having a look at how things are, the importance of my work, and the fact that I can talk about my work this way right now is a product of me introspecting and stepping back a little bit every day. I try to do less, um, met people less, and in that process, I believe that I have, I suppose, loved people more than I could ever, um, in a general sense, you know what I mean? Like, how I love myself, in a sense. So recently has been like sort of that quiet kind of moment, so I'm honoring the day-to-day -day things. That's why the things that are coming out of me are dishes and all that stuff. <laughs> Not that I do a lot of it yeah. like, at home, yeah. but uh, um, I realize the relevance of upkeep of life. Um, not trying to label this as much more important, you know, because people see it, but the day-to-day -day things, before you show up to work, 
the mornings um, that I commit to walk my dog, me and my wife, let him play there. The moment that me and my wife have breakfast before we get to work. Um, coming from work and all that and being um, having a conversation before we end the day that way. So trying to establish a routine that is ours, I suppose. And in that sense, um, yeah, um, not a lot of um, exploration outside, but more within. That's really cool, man. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I enjoy learning about the minimalist way of like life or the w minimalist way yeah, of... Yeah, it's a curious thing. You mm. live in life, yeah. Mm. And, and how that transfers into other things. Mm. Like the small things in life. Yeah. Going for a walk and having that routine. Exactly, yeah. Of quality moments, mm. sharing breakfast with our partner. Yeah. yeah, and when I go to work, I'm really at work and all that. So um, trying to sort of own up to everything I can do. And we run the place nowadays as, say, the thought of even our apprentice knowing um, how, you know, from the owners is, is the place run. Um, and for me, that's a learning of delegation. Um, I never knew how to delegate. I was quite controlling, I suppose, of how I worked. And after seeing my work as well sort of have some result, um, I felt the need to sort of tell people what to do, and I had to learn from that. And of course, I'm still learning about that right now, but just learning how to trust people in that sense. So when I'm at work, I thought um, I'll try not to think about a lot of things, but being at work, you know? So whatever comes with it. And establishing, I suppose, a priority that we cut hair um, and everything that supports it. So along with that, we don't compromise our well-being, I said, so I try to pay attention to my workmates because um, I think everyone knows this universally that in this world that we live in right now, we see our coworkers more sometimes that are personal um, peeps, like yeah, our partners bro. and all that, right? At least our waking life, you know? When we get home, our partners are there, but we sleep at some point of that as well. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of learning to not resist being at work, seeing that it's uncompromisable because it gives us sustenance, I would say at the very, bare minimum of, of it. So when I'm at work, I try to be at work and learn from my co-workers and how they cut and I suppose just the generation is younger right now and how they cultivate themselves is quite fascinating and just seeing how my workmates work, I learn a lot of things as well, yeah. Pretty interesting people. Yeah. And they do all these things I'm like, I don't understand and back then I'll be resistant and I, just, I really look at it, I'm like, well, why do you know it worked? <laughs> Yeah, it worked, yeah. yeah. I'm seeing um, our apprentice right now progress, and it's a fascinating thing, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool seeing people grow. Bro, I um, with, um, with mindfulness and being present, like, yeah. th you mentioned one thing there with, like, the res stopping, resisting, stopping the, resist the resistance of going to work, of yes, like that, yeah. oh, man, I don't want to go to work. Yeah. Oh, shit, i got to go to work. Uh, mm. I can't imagine how draining that would be to be in that mindset of, like it being like a mega chore and like hating to go to work yeah. every time. But I think sadly a lot of um, a yeah, lot of man. our friends and members That's of true. the community do experience that and like yeah. uh, might be battling with that. Quite yeah. quite empowering when um, when we can like regain the morning, like have mm. have a nice routine, yeah. and then we're, when we're at work, we're just at work. Of yeah, the, like, present and it's you so balance, simple. Like yeah. we cut hair. That's what we're here to do. Yeah, so, like, yeah. Let's do not complicate that. Stuff, yeah, you let's know? let's have fun and uh, and be natural yeah, yeah. and organic and everything but, that supports with it. You know. Yeah. So that's the main thing. Um, you know, we like you, you've been there. We make coffee. We give you drinks and all that, and that's fine and well, right? We we focus on that too. Yeah. But um, people there are there to get a haircut. That's the set of expectations. So yeah. That we gotta really, really, you know, hit the mark. Sometimes, you know, maybe we can argue about our attitude when we have tired days and all that, but I try to encourage the boys, at least show up with your work, make yeah. your work irrefutable, um, and everything will just sort of follow through, at least here. So when you're at home, you can sit pretty and not think about work, yeah. you know what I mean? Because you've done work well, you know? Yeah. So that, I love it. I love the whole choice thing about it. And a lot of people get choiceless about what work they have. Um, and... In, in, in my industry, um, at the start of um, my industry at least, I've seen myself um, and a lot of my coworkers in transient nature about it. Like that, this is not my job yet. You know, I'm only doing this for this and that, you know. Oh, at okay. some point there, you know, I would get this feeling of offend, offense about it. I'd get offended about it or I don't yeah. know why I carry it as if I carried a barbering world with me. Yeah. But it just makes me wonder like, you know, it's my ego and it getting in the way. And when I stopped um, thinking that way, it just made me feel like, all right, okay, well, I don't see it like that, you know? Um, when I did, I did, but when I stopped seeing it as a transient nature, 
I anchored myself there. What can I really do about it? But I have respect for people as well that feel like they're transient about it. But my encouragement to it is, while you're here, be here. Yeah. You know, um, when do you plan of thinking of moving along and acting on what you see yourself in the future? You know, um, I have to talk to one of the guys that I still work with nowadays in particular about it. And, um, and I tell him about, like, um, you know, while you're here, be here. So when you grow into something else, you know, you would have this practice of being there too. Because there's a lot of us that live this life that, as an escape, sort of escape artist in a sense. Like, you know, um, I'll escape home, I'll go to work. When I get to work, I'll escape work and go, you know, drink with my friends. Oh, this is a bummer. I'll escape this and go home again. And you, and you go to that process. You're never present. You're never anywhere. Because when you're here, you're thinking of elsewhere. And yeah. when you're that elsewhere, you're thinking of elsewhere again. So it's good to go, I'm um, supposed to aim for goals, but um, it's good to be in the moment. So I, I tell them with that thought process, I'm like, be here, man. Um, I want you to not really give you full, you know, all and all that, but just give respect. I'm even happy with bare minimum. Most of the time, bare minimum is good, you know, and everything is a bonus. Like how I look at sustenance as food and everything that I won't argue with that, that's bare minimum for me. But everything else, you have a choice. And I love, um, telling people about this choice and all that, just because you can do it, man. You can decide. You don't need to wait for me. Yeah. You don't need to wait for anyone. You decide on the best of your knowledge what you can do and learn and be brave about it. Um, it's a courage thing, I suppose, and not a lot of us can muster that. So just you know, showing up to work and everything and doing that and learning and going through the process because life itself is a process. You're not done to your dead. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Because in the end, you can a, do it, man. You're going to live tomorrow, you'll do it again. Yeah. No, <laughs> nice punchline, man. <laughs> yeah, you're not done until you're dead. <laughs> you're not done until you're dead. Friends That's true. fella at mm -hmm. Instagram. Bro. Yep. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> bro, um, the yes. last little while I've been practicing mm -hmm. um, and I've been investing a lot of my energy into mindfulness. Just oh, with, okay. not through like reading heavy books about it or researching mm -hmm. it, but just experimenting it more with myself. Mm -hmm. um, in the in the last little while, I've been heavily investing my time and energy, and I'm loving it into um, into our gym community and doing everything uh -huh. that I can to make sure that mm -hmm. our members are not not just over the moon happy with everything, but uh -huh. also getting the transformations in, with their health and fitness that they're targeting. Mm -hmm. And it's been one of the best things in my career so far. Wow! And yeah, investing and going all in into mm -hmm. um, into being be fortunate enough to help be alongside our um, our community that's yeah. like crushing it whether their goal is fat loss or manage their health mm. or help with their chronic disease or that's their amazing, injury hey, or yeah. to impact people that way it's mm. super badass um, mm. but it's meant that I'm investing a lot of my time and hours and I think by default I'm now more present of choices and I'm more present of mm. mindfulness that's of true. like and another thing that you said earlier of like saying no to things of like, I don't, yeah. I don't no, actually I don't need to go yeah. to that event because I want to prioritize this or yeah. like spending more time That's here. True. Yeah. Mm. Um, what's your thoughts on mindfulness and, um, and what helps you remain mindful and like, and be present with, you know, if you're walking the dog with your wife, Mm. You know, not worrying about other things or like when you're at work, not worrying about other things or if you're hanging with mates. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. For me, um, it always starts up in the morning, waking up and meditating. Yeah. Five, ten minutes every morning. Okay. Just focusing and breathing. Um, I suppose as basic as that because it's very basic, I suppose, to sort of be aware of your breathing. And that practice allows me to sort of have this capacity. I, f I see that as a training, almost like you're training your muscle. So when things happen, you just get clearer and clearer every time. You know, It was so long for me to see the results of, of the impact that in, in my life and all that. I've seen it, it impacting other people and frustrated me when, when I suppose they focus on something and all that. But I could never you know, sort of get to a point where where they are, I believe. So I stopped just like looking at it and just meditating, showing to it. And what do you know, eventually um, it just started sort of impacting my life in a clear point of view that um, even on say rough days or days you didn't have good sleep and all that, you know how to sort of step back, you know. Um, I've encountered this phrase somewhere, um, when in doubt, zoom out. 
sometimes you're standing too close to it and all that, you know, you're, you're seeing things too fast, a step back and all that. And you can see things clearly and you can go in there and act again from, from that thought of clarity and do it two times, do it a million times, but do it anyway, step back and then go into it again. So I suppose meditating every morning allows me to do that, um, to be able to sort of really do it. You know, we, we can aim for things, but sometimes we lack the tools of doing something and all that. And I love when you, when you talk about experimenting and, and seeing yourself in it, because um, it's hard to relate when you haven't seen it yourself as well, you know? You can have this idea and all that. So for me, meditation allows me to have that. Like, I've often talked about this as like, um, for me, meditation is folded clothes, you know, folded clean clothes. Um, and you can see where I'm focusing with these chores again, right? Yeah. So when you have, say, clean clothes, it's just a pile in there. And when someone asks you, um, where's that red um, medium shirt? Can I borrow it? You have to go through it and all that stuff. Where is it? Where is it? Well, if it's folded and all that, here it is at this pile. You, you put it there. It's all organized. So it allows me to be a bit more, I suppose, ready when something happens that you're required to just have clarity, you know, when, when everyone is in a turmoil, getting carried away, something bad is going on, you can just ask in a task-oriented way. And of course you feel that, but you just kind of like cast aside your fear and all that, like stand behind me, Satan kind of thing, you know. <laughs> just aside, aside, and you just go through it when the things are done and you sleep and you, you rest and all that. But it allows you to have that capacity to sort of do that. So meditating for me has been very, very helpful and um, it allowed me to separate my, my feelings and good and bad to, you know, what it really is. And it's a very important tool of mindfulness and you get mindful everywhere. It just, it just affects everything. It's beautiful. Yeah. It does, it does affect mm. everything, man. Mm. I, um, I have never been that disciplined with my meditation, but I look forward mm -hmm. to experimenting with it one day. Um, I've started with, yeah. I think what got me into it is breathing. Yeah, I, um, yeah. I've started fascinating Powerful. on the mm. power of breath, man. Yeah, um, that's true. There's a book that I'm finishing at the moment. Um, James Nestor. He's like a mm -hmm. uh, one of these scientists. I think he's from America, uh -huh. um, and his book is called Breath: um, The Lost Science of Breathing. True. It's, it's often like sounds very good. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. in health and fitness and in in the gym game, it's mm -hmm. often the most overlooked aspect yes, yeah we focus heavy on exercise we focus heavy mm. on nutrition mm -hmm. and sometimes we focus on sleep and alcohol uh -huh. and uh, calories and other macronutrients but very rarely do, mm. we, do we talk about jumping into big breath. things but starting from breathing i suppose it's like yeah. starting from morning walking your dog yeah like that. Yeah, yeah yeah the smallest things how, how you wash one cup and rather than tackling the whole house yeah so i suppose that's that yeah I Breath like, is underestimated. Yeah. yeah, I really like that analogy of like meditation and grounding yourself in the mm. morning is like the the clean pile of of uh, uh, yeah, laundry, clothes. Yeah, yeah, folded clothes. Because you know that, where yeah. it is and you're like ready and prepared. Yeah, yeah. It just yeah. It seems to be like before I started seeing it, I don't believe all these things, man. I used to just scuff at self help books and all that yeah. with the arrogance too, of that, you know. But eventually, it started making sense, you know, and started reading to it, started relating to it. Like, well, what do you know? It yeah. does work. Yeah, yeah I that's used just to, me. That's I just used to just ignore it. Like it, it yeah. never used to. Um, when I was younger, I was yeah. Like, what is all this shit these guys talking about, bro? Weak people. Yeah, I was a bit, oh, <laughs> there's development. I'm so what, strong, you know. Yeah. What I mean? <laughs> like just something as simple as like, what are you like? What are you working on right now? Or like, yeah. what are you trying to improve right now? Yeah, my, you, the, you get focused and all that. It's yeah. just amazing when you get to do that. Yeah, my my thought would be like, what do you mean, bro? I'm focusing on uni. I'm working. Like I'm not really mm. like I didn't even know how to answer that question or. Or like um, how you asked your your friend at work, yeah. why are you here? Or like what? Yeah. Why do, why are you doing this? Like questions yes, like yeah. that used to be really challenging for me. Or like I would mm. always see it at like face value. I'd never really yeah. dive deep into it. But um, it's true. More, Those are hard questions, though. Yeah. Before I could ask anyone about that, um, I struggled asking that myself. And yeah. All that. Of course, yeah. But when I ask that and not be afraid of not having an answer, then we'll find out. Um, I've, um, I've heard this phrase as well that answers, I mean, questions are good because even if you can't find the answer right now, sooner than later, whether yeah. it be a millennia from now, it will be there. So someone asked about the stars and the moon, say, centuries ago, and here we are yeah. still not knowing the answers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, there will be answers for it in a sense. Yeah. So I love that. In a sense, just throw an answer that for yourself and you know, see how you go. Yeah. yeah. Try. Yeah. 
So yeah, quite nice. Yeah. What else? Well, I don't know, <laughs> man. I don't know what we're talking about. Do you want a haircut? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll talk more. Oh, uh, yeah. shit. When I cut your hair, we'll talk uh, a lot. Yeah, some, some of my friends are like, bro, when are you cutting? When are you getting rid of it? Mm. Like, go back to, like, the... Sweat, mm. like no, this is yeah, the, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, I don't. And then like the other half of my friends be like, bro, your hair, your long hair is sick, bro. Keep going. Yeah. So, uh, but I just do whatever I want. Why well, see this <laughs> curiosity, bro? Like you're right, you're bang on on that one. When I yeah. met you, when I first got your hair and all that, it's so different from this. Yeah, course. it's like completely. Yeah. yeah I, but I love, I love all these things. Like I'm not the one to tell anyone about what they should do. And you know, in the end, uh, nowadays I stop doing that if I ever did. But I love seeing people get curious about something, you know. I have nothing but been encouraging about what you're doing here. And when you say, like, oh, it's a little bit this and that, you know, and then we talk about it and we do it. So yeah. we'll follow your curiosity and all that. <laughs> I like to say, use me as your hands, you know. In the end, I'll execute your thoughts and we'll talk about it and all that. I'll show up with my skills and my experience about it. And then bro, you tell me with your vision amazing. and see if we can see that, yeah. But the way you approach it is just cool, like, listening uh, oh, and hearing, like chatting to you about this stuff, I enjoy just yeah, listening to Yeah, it makes it sound stuff. so legit yeah, the, and well, so important. The, the way I, the, it's like the way I obsess with exercise yeah. is the way that you obsess with hair. It's, yes. it's cool, man. Like that mm. art, like you say, the art of like just being into something. It's, yes, exactly, it's, yeah. It's, it's that's really the, That's, I suppose, the commonality that we have with most people, passionate about something. It's just simply that, you know? Like, and when you talk yeah. about it, you talk about the process, it just gets you encouraged and all that. So... It is actually not that easy, but it's cool, you know. Um, you do it because you're into it. Yeah. And even if it's tiring, like you said, like, oh, I'll do this, but you do it anyway because you gravitate towards it. That's just how you are, you know. That's yeah. you're curious about that. So, And when I see you do all these things about, like, you know, your gym and everything that you put your mind into, it's quite inspiring, of course. It's an encouragement in a sense that, like, you know, you can actually do it. Just show up. Yeah. So whatever you're curious in and all that, I'm like, so what is he doing now with his beard and all that? <laughs> and I ask you, like, I want to be natural. I'm like, then just go home. <laughs> no, but we are sure and all that, yeah. All we got to have a bit of a like touch to it. Like, out, bro, yeah. Yeah, no, well, we still, um, I've been saying this a lot recently, and I was cutting customers here yesterday, and um, he's trying to go um, a mullet, like, it's the talk of the town right now. Mullet bro, mullets are stuff. in, huh? Yeah, man, like, so I always tell people in the sense like you gotta really own the mullet. You're ruining it for the mullet wearers out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, oh, so I like to just pressure. really tell people in the sense that like you know if you're gonna go for it, man, curious about it, go for it in a sense. So, this guy that came in yesterday got a haircut and um, in a sense the whole haircut's just like I want it to be as natural as I can have it and all that. But he just shaved his hair before and he grew it all along and all that. And I told him, well, what he's going for is like a bit of a mullet, a bit of a crop on top. And I thought, you know, we'll shave the sides. But my, what I'm trying to get into is like be intentional about what you want. So if you have, say, one thing here and there that you're letting go, our contribution to it as a barber is to sort of put the intention in it, that this is your intention, to grow your hair messy. But how we do that is maybe to clean a few things here and there. So what I've done with this, I clean a little bit in the side here and all that to make his haircut look intentional. It's intentionally messy. Cool. So if you show up with this beastly beard and beastly hair and all that, <laughs> if you're um, cleaning your clothes and all that, yeah. that is intentional right there. Because he yeah. couldn't have just stopped and got lazy with his head. That's right. Because he, he bothered with his, uh, with his outfit and all that. Yeah. So I like the intentional way of living and all that. Like, you know, if you're intentionally missing, man, I like to be messy, like that, you know. But I don't think anyone likes to be messy. So for yeah. me, make things intentional. I suppose that's that, you know. Nice. With hair, yours is intentional, so that's why we clean it around here. Clean it all, And we bro. grow the things beastly Jeez, and all that. Bro. But you check out the lines, it's there. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. It's all the details, man. It is. Yeah, it's true. Especially with our work. Yeah. yeah. Bro, thank you, for, mm -hmm. um, thank you for dropping in. Of course, man. I'm going to... chat, man. Yeah. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. Of course. Appreciate it, brother. Oh, <laughs> cheers.